guys. Um, I'd like to call your attention to the Weather Channel. This guy is going to go on to tell you a little bit about what happened to West Liberty, Kentucky. Um, this town is on lockdown, and I'm going to let him tell you that, okay? So bear with. Right before dark, it came in from the west and went right through the heart of West Liberty. And this is the county seat of Morgan County. It went right through the busiest intersection. Not one single building downtown has not been hit by this tornado. Every single building has sustained damage at this point. Today, this town is on lockdown. It's been set up a perimeter around this town by the uh, state patrol. They've got a perimeter set up also by the National Guard, and the reason being, they've got to get a, a lot of the big debris cleaned up. They're still ongoing search and rescue. At this hour, they hope to potentially uh, get rid of, of those crews by this evening, and they won't be doing any more search and rescue. And so tomorrow, then, it begins full 100% debris cleanup. A big a power cruise. Now, do you think they need a state police and National Guard perimetered lockdown to clean up debris why would you need the place locked down there's people's loved ones and their own belongings i've uh that that baffles me and he slid in that zinger and then continued right on with a, a pretty overt subliminal in my own opinion but i just wanted to call your attention to west liberty via this man's words on the weather channel on a lockdown by the state police and national guards of course they're armed and there's a perimeter set up god bless folks but first the skies may have cleared for the time being at least but the floodwaters just keep rising nearly five thousand people have now fled their homes in the face of the raging torrents and 10 has reporters in the hardest hit areas gabriel boyle is in forbes matt moran in gundagai and Zoe ford in wagga wagga and we'll start in Wagga Wagga, where hundreds of residents have been evacuated. Mazoe's there, as we just mentioned. She joins us now. Mazoe, the levee is due to peak tomorrow. People taking any chances? Sandra, absolutely not. But we must begin with some breaking news tonight. We have learned that the New South Wales Ambulance has ordered the evacuation of 16 elderly residents from a nursing home at Urana, and that's about... They are just a few of the 4,600 plus people who've been evacuated across the River Rena in the past couple of days. The river hasn't even peaked yet. There's still a metre shy of where they're expecting it to go. Some people have stayed home to protect their properties, but have a look at these pictures and you'll see why it's really important to heed the SES warnings and evacuate when they say so. The wide brown land of Wagga Wagga, now a watery, muddy mess. This is the rock, around 30 kilometres out of the city centre. It's been swamped by flood water. My colleague Matt Moran has spent the day there and he's discovered that they're looking at a damage bill in excess of $20 million. All Trish and Chris can do is look on. It's terrible. Can't do nothing about it though. Are you insured? Yes, but last time we didn't do real good with insurance, so I hope they come through this time. It's a lot worse this time, though. They removed what they could and are just hoping the water stops rising soon. We had a lot of people come and help us move all the stuff out, and, um, yeah, the SES, we've been ringing them every four hours. They got their predictions a little bit wrong with the height. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, March 5th, 2012, and I'm Darko. GGNonline.com is my website, and DDarko2012 and DDarko2013 are my YouTube channels. Please check out all the headlines and links in YouTube's video description if you're just joining me. Okay, so I'll cover some of the weather modification um, experiments, operations that were carried out recently. You saw uh, West Liberty, uh, Kentucky, but it wasn't just there. Um, we had I saw this in North Carolina, survived tornado, and then down in Alabama again. So uh, a lot is going on right now, and pl I recommend if you haven't watched my video, uh, the battle cry um, for a planet of victims, please go and watch that because that ex this lays it out in 15 minutes. This scheme, the scam, the business uh, that is created. Poor souls that are their lives and their livelihoods are ruined, like that Auss Aussie was saying. You know, insurance companies didn't help her last time. She's she didn't sound too optimistic about them helping this time. Like the other guy didn't seem too optimistic about the actual government helping them. 
and uh, and what? It's a big business, and the banks and the insurance companies will come in, and uh, you know all the taxpayers will f will uh, you know they'll have these contracts d uh, doled out to these contractors, and uh, you know it's just it's just a big scam. It's a big ripoff. That's what it is. And uh, like in the United States, I, I've mentioned this a while back. I haven't mentioned it in a while, but a lot of these floods that are created by uh, these weather modifications, i.e. spraying of aerosols, cloud seeding and whatnot, um, what does that do? Well, it allows not only insurance companies to come in, it allows not only the clampdown of entire cities lo on lockdown, um, you know, and having, you know, checkpoints in that basically. Uh, what else do you have? Well, you saw in that one video about mass evacuations in Australia, and uh, not all the times, but many times, those are force evacuations. So it's getting people conditioned for that. Um, they're getting people prepared, but also uh, FEMA. That's what I was going to say. With these ones in the United States, they'll have FEMA go out there, and they'll just dole out all this money, right? And they don't even actually check or, or do anything like that. They just they're buying people's trust. To get to trust FEMA to go into those uh, FEMA uh, uh, emergency centers, national emergency centers. Okay, so seven-year-old boy survives brush with tornado in North Carolina. We saw that. Then look at this: Twister slams uh, same area hit by killer storm in 2011, and uh, it goes on. It says a killer twister wiped out his neighborhood in the epic Alabama storms, April 27th, causing $40,000 worth of damage that forced him to temporarily move in with his parents. Uh, in his house for less than two months with repairs still incomplete. Another tornado hit again, ripping off the roof. I c quote, I kind of expected there to be more storms again this year, but you never expect it to hit the same place twice. Well, this isn't uh, mother nature. This is uh, man nature, right? This is uh, just pure man's work, I think. Uh, if we have this. Uh, world cooling has set in, warns astrophysicists, v BBC and global warming apologists challenge you and cover up. I've mentioned this before. Go in there and check it out. So before I continue with the cooling, I just want to put a little side note, a little disclaimer, because I haven't mentioned this before. Um, but it, I do think it's a, a good possibility that there is a, a major pull, t pull shift going on. So that could play into it as well. But I just want to put make make it clear to people who are just getting into this information that weather modification is being carried out it does exist no matter what the media and the government tells you so a lot of times after the fact they'll go back and say oh this is due to climate change it's all due to climate change you know because it's a it's a crap theory and it's not really based off anything but just conjecture and whatnot so they can say oh well there could be more snow. It could be colder. You know, all this stuff that they're doing with weather modification, creating these storms, creating these hurricanes, creating these earthquakes, right? And then they could just what? They can blame it on man and say, oh, see, it's climate change. It's human-induced climate change. Well, they won't say that it's actually the humans that are actually spraying aerosols that are causing it. So, yeah, we have this. It says you don't have far to look. Look at the sky and you'll see for yourself the deliberate global dimming in action by aircraft on one hand and on the other. Uh, look at any green academic and you'll see a dense foggy mist of global nothingness filling up an otherwise blank vacuum between his two ears. And a lot of times you'll mention this to people. I've actually pointed it out and uh, gave a very intelligent explanation, and they literally just don't say anything. It's like a it's it, it's a psychological shutdown. They have to shut down, I, I guess, because they can't handle it or something. So it's here. U.S. law allows chemical and biological testing on populace. This is all just laying framework for what I'm getting to here, guys. So just bear with me. Public law basically saying that. Um, you could be experimented on with biological and chemical weapons, so they can do what they're doing. Uh, chemicals, U.S. patent number 5003186, stratospheric well box seeding for reduction of global warming. And it goes in there and it says, along uh, uh, suspected that the suspicious cloud seeding activity in the sky was commonly called chemtrails, has been part of a program and research into the methods to reduce the amount of solar radiation and heat and therefore reduce global warming. But today, this person discovered the patent for this Wells box seeding for reduction of global warming patent, March 26, 1991. So he goes on there, and he says that he actually thought, he goes, my chemtrail uh, theory is that they are spraying a substance which is meant to reflect sunlight and alter the albedo of the Earth. He, I, I, th I think what he's saying is that he thought it was to fight global warming because they keep calling for it, right? 
you keep hearing about oh we're gonna calling for we're calling for Arctic geoengineering as if it's not happening I've mentioned this before he said this was before I discovered this document today 10 4 2009 he goes it was a patent PDF and he goes in there and basically talks about uh, how it works but such materials that they can use can include the class of materials known as Welsbach materials the oxides of metal uh, i.e. aluminum oxide are suitable for the purpose. Aluminum oxide is one metal oxide suitable for the purpose which is relatively inexpensive. They found that larger particles tend to settle to the earth more quickly, you know, duh, but it goes on and says that uh, the spraying, the cloud seeding should be done at uh, an altitude of 33,000 feet. It goes on, the particles may be seeded by dispersal from seeding aircraft. One technique may be via jet fuel as suggested by prior work regarding to the metallic particles. Once the tiny particles have been dispersed into the atmosphere, the particles may remain in suspension for up to one year. And I've actually heard up to three years and longer by um, uh, Mr. Carnicon. So it's in association with Hughes Aircraft, believe it or not. But uh, the, the theory is these particles would screen out radiation from the sun while allowing heat from the Earth's uh, surface to pass through. Okay, then we have policy implications of greenhouse uh, warming. And it says here it's a massive research study entitled Policy Implications of Greenhouse Warming, Mitigation and Adaptation in the Science Base Panel on Policy Implications of Greenhouse Warming, sponsored by the National Academy of Sciences. And the results were presented in 1992 and published in a book um, by the National Academy of Press. It's a 994-page study on greenhouse gases, global warming, and whatnot. But it goes in here and it says that um, the conclusion the National Academy of Science found was the most effective method um, of global warming mitigation turned out to be the spring of or reflective uh, aerosol compounds into the atmosphere utilizing commercial, military, and private aircraft which is what I've always uh, suspected. The compounds of aluminum, barium oxide. This method was the most cost-effective cost and yielded the largest benefits. It could also be conducted covertly to avoid the burdens of environmental protection and regulatory entanglements. Remember, this is all for the environment. It is evident to anyone who cares to look up that this mitigation is now being conducted worldwide and on a daily basis. It is certain that our leaders have already embarked on this immense geoengineering project, one in which they expect millions of human fatalities and consider these to be acceptable losses. And to finish up, Council on Foreign Relations on Planetary Geoengineering add more small reflecting particles in the upper part of the atmosphere from March 2009. Then we have this, water poisoning, aluminum in brain beyond belief. A woman who lived in a town where aluminum sulfate was added to the water supply had aluminum levels in her brain which were beyond uh, belief. An inquest in her death was heard. This is from March 2012. Going to keep moving fast, so stick with me here. Tokyo uh, starts to burn debris in earnest at inc incineration plants for regular household garbage in 23 special wards. So they're going to burn the debris now. And BP has a settlement. That's right. Remember, they were expecting $40 billion uh, payout here. BP settlement doesn't benefit my clients. And it goes on here and it says after Friday's late night deal to reach a settlement uh, with plaintiffs, they uh, reported $7.8 billion. That's what they're going to get or are going to have to pay. So BP got off lightly and has paid uh, roughly half of what they were expecting. Iowa passes a law demanding total secrecy over factory farm uh, practices capturing undercover footage of extreme animal abuse at factory farms is soon to be illegal in Iowa. Remember this, uh, U.S. Congress expands authoritarian anti-protest law restricting uh, certain places that they designate. But look at this, China has their own. China's black shirts hired by regime to stop Chinese protesters. Remember, we're heading into a post-democratic era, so grandmother fined 75 pounds for littering after dropping just a strand of cotton from one of her gloves. So this is all about eco-fascism and whatnot, right? In the name of saving the planet, fined 50 pounds for dropping a tenor shopper who dropped a 10-pound note in the street by accident has been fined for littering. 4,000 pounds for slipping out a potato and 2,500 pounds for walking into a door. How NHS staff cash in on accidents at work. So you want to know where it goes. Hospital staff member awarded 2,000, almost 3,000 pounds uh, for hurting her shoulder while throwing litter into a bin. So you can support the 300,000 organic farmers who lost their court battle to Monsanto and sign this petition. I did it earlier today. I'll post a link. And California family farmers who appeared in court for uh, farm fresh food production and distribution were slapped with a $2 million, $1 million arrest warrant and handcuffed and marched away by agents. In Britain, one in five has to borrow money to buy food. 
Illinois state and the U.S. is on the brink of collapse. Amid huge layoffs and pay cuts, bank profits hit a five-year high, then boom era property speculators to get foreclosure aid. Then the Iceland's former premier goes to trial over actually representing his people. Basically telling the banks to go to the devil, the Postal Service, and the U.S. CEO gets huge income amid job cuts. And the elite's drug money saved banks in global crisis as the U.N. It benefits corrupt banksters, i.e. themselves. This is GGN. God bless.